here I've already prepared a sketch on a thin piece of photocopy paper and laid it down over the piece of velour. I'm using an embossing tool to go around the details on this pre-prepared sketch and this, when pressed hard enough, will leave an indentation on the velour. This creates the guidelines needed to then go on to create the sketch on the velour. So here I'm using a Dela Rowney pastel pencil, it's the sepia one, it's quite hard and can be sharpened to quite a fine point. And I'm now going over all of those indentations to create guidelines on the velour. This is an easy way of getting your initial sketch onto the velour. I wouldn't ever recommend sketching directly onto the velour because you can't erase from it. So it's best to do your sketch on another piece of paper preferably a thin piece of paper to use this technique and then transfer it using this indentation method. Okay and on to the background now we've got our prepared sketch done. So what we're doing is we're using very light layers of soft pastel. Um, here you can see that I'm using greens and browns and I'll come in with some with blue as well and what I'm going to create is an out of focus background this piece only measures 8 inches square so I didn't want the background to be anything to draw the eye to I just wanted this, the main subject, the parrot, to be the piece of interest in the painting so here you can see I'm going on with some blue working with a very light hand as you can't erase from velour it's a good idea just to keep the layers quite thin because you can always add more but you can't take the pastel off I've heard of people hoovering the velour, but uh, I'll leave that to other people. So creating lots of thin layers and building from dark to light, although you can go light to dark as well. The velour's tooth is really, really deep, so you'll be able to get 20 plus layers on if you need to. And if not, you can just do thicker layers if you feel more that way inclined. So here, just working more of the same, a light hand, and I'm actually working round and round in little circles, trying to avoid making any harsh lines. So, the more pastel you actually put on, the easier it is to blend with velour. The tooth of velour is really, really deep, and I like to think of it as like a shag pile carpet underneath a microscope. The pile is so, so deep, um, and if you've only got very little soft pastel laying in that it's just going to sit there and, and you won't be able to move it around with your fingers but if you build the layers up in the pile as the the layers reach the top surface of the pile they're the ones that you're able to blend more easily it's like pouring ball bearings into a shag pile carpet you don't they'd all move around if you um, rubbed your fingers over them and that's the same with the pastel um, base coats so build your base coats up with the soft pastels and um, this is the way I, I work anyway and then on top of that if you want to you could add detail if you needed to add detail in the background that's how I do it lots of soft pastel base coats followed by detailing using pastel pencils okay so we're just working around a little bit more more of the same it's really your greens and your blues are going to push the background further back uh, not physically but the way it looks so warm colours generally tend to make things look nearer to the viewer and cool colours make things look further away from the viewer so by adding cool greens and blues lilacs tones like that and colours like that light and dark tones and those colours the background will be pushed away from the viewer then such things as warm oranges reds oranges on their own they're the kind of colours and warm browns, they're the kind of colours that are going to be looking to the viewer as though they're closer to them. So that's something to remember when creating a composition for a piece, is which colours to use where, what effect you want to get in that painting. Okay, so more of the same. Just careful not to go too far over the edge of the parrot although you can cover it up, that's the best thing about velour, it will take that many layers that if you do make a mistake don't worry about it, just add another layer okay so the background was completed in more of the same way and now we're moving on to the subject it's a blue and gold macaw 
um, and this is smaller than life size so I'm not going in with too much detail on this piece but as you can see we've begun working on the, the macaw the same way we did with the background by putting the soft coat base layers down with the soft pastels and then we're just going over the top and just shaping this a little bit I'm looking continually at a reference image that is to the right obviously that's off screen and I'm seeing which way the feathers lie which direction they lie and I'm just getting a feel for the top of its head at the moment none of these feathers are really really visible there's just a feel of them being there and that's what I want to create if you try and draw in every single little feather especially somewhere like the top of the head it will just it'll look false so just keep it nice and simple when you're working on a piece that's actually smaller than the actual subject would be in life so if this was a commission piece of someone's pet then on commission pieces I generally nine times out of ten work the subject the same size than life or larger and that way I can get all the detail on and it looks right but anything smaller the more detail you put on it looks bunched together and it, it can look a bit artificial a little bit false okay so we've got a blue base coat on now for this yellow area on the parrot I'm actually starting with the mid range with a mid tone colour so it's not the lightest gold not the lightest yellowy gold on that area and it's not the darkest it's hopefully smack in between and that way I can go lighter for the highlights and darker for the shades with the same hue but just a different tone. So I'm just blending it in with my fingers and where you can see on that that I've actually leaned the colour over into the next section to the right that doesn't matter because that area is going to be black or predominantly black but we'll come back to that in a minute. So back to the blue, the nape which is the back of the neck um, we're just going round here, I say we, it's me, sitting in the studio on my own <laughs> but nine times out of ten talking to myself anyway you have to do that or you just become a hermit so yeah, what I'm doing is I'm just getting a feel for the texture on the back of the neck as the further you go down the feathers become more defined but what I do say here is only give a vague sense of shape for these feathers don't outline them don't draw a line round each feather because it will look very cartoonish um, all I'm doing at the minute is I'm just adding some shadowing to give a sense of where the feathers end and the feather coming out from underneath begins that's all I'm doing here not not outlining at all but again a very very light hand as you can see I've got nice points on these pencils that's actually a carbothello pastel pencil I'm using and I create the points not with a sharp and not with a pencil sharpener but I use a knife and sandpaper and I know some people don't like that and some people do and some people think it's the only way I think whatever works for you to be quite honest um, I was brought up using knives to carve wood <laughs> with my dad um, he was a, a tool room engineer um, and a carpenter and an artist and everything else um, and he always used to use a knife and I've just been brought up sharpening pencils with knives and sandpaper so yeah lead pencil I would just use a knife um, pasta pencils I'd take away the wood with a knife and sharpen the pastel itself on a piece of very fine sandpaper but if that works for you then that's great and if it doesn't and you like to use a pencil sharpener that's great as long as you're creating artwork it doesn't matter how you get there so and I will be making a video hopefully about sharpening pencils that might go live well it might have gone live yesterday depends what filming I'm editing I get done today okay this is all new to me by the way I've never done YouTube videos before I've taught for over 10 years but um, YouTube is definitely new in the area and I'm not tech savvy and the area of videos is so new to me so please forgive me and I, I promise that I will I will try to improve my videoing techniques and my voiceover techniques and 
and everything else that goes with it too. So please bear with me and thank you for subscribing for those of, that you, of you that have up to now. It's brilliant of you, thank you. Truly appreciated. Okay, back to the painting. So I've put some shape in with a little bit of shading and all the pencils I've used up to now have been the Carbothello pastel pencils, okay? So this is a black. Now, black and white, mm, less is more. Definitely in this case with this shading because if you do put too much on, it's again, as I say, it's going to look cartoony if you start outlining things. So really, this is just very, very soft and I'm holding the pencil far back along the barrel so I don't apply too much pressure. And if you lean your pencil right back like that and rotate it as you work, you'll find that you keep your point a lot longer as well. So a little bit of shading, a little bit of shaping as well. And on with some more soft coat. So this is a soft pastel creating the base coat. Nice soft base coat going on there. For those of you that haven't worked in velour before, if you've ever touched a velvet cushion or a velvet curtain or anything made of velvet, you can actually push the plush, that takes some saying, push the plush backwards and forwards and it'll redirect the light, it'll reflect the light in a different way. Velour is very much like that in that you can get the pile of velour to lay in a certain direction. And once the pastel pencil pigment or the soft pastel pigment adheres to the velour, it will catch the light in different ways depending on which way the pile is laying. I hope this is making sense. So what I do suggest is when you're working on feathers and fur or scales or anything that has direction, work in that direction. So if the if the fur is laying to the right, then work in the di in that direction or to the left or whichever way it is. So the feathers are going from the top right to the bottom left, and that's the way I'm pulling that soft pastel pencil. So, sorry, soft pastel and the pastel pencils. They're going in the same direction that I want the feathers to lay because it will push the plush down, and it just looks different. If, you, if I was to do horizontal lines, the, the feathers would look different. So it does, does affect the, the final painting. I've found that's how I work. This is only my humble opinion. So I, d I have taught for, like I said, over 10 years, but I prefer to think of it that I'm inspiring and encouraging people. Sounds nicer than teaching. <laughs> okay, so we're going on with some more of the pastel pencil, the Carbothello dark blue. Very, very light hand, always a light hand. I can always add more layers. The worst thing you want to do though is go on with a really heavy layer and it be the wrong layer. And then you have to overlay soft pastels to start all over again. One, it's time consuming. And two, it can be really annoying as well so you you just want to get it right or roughly right first time I mean there's nothing to stop you layering and layering because it will take those layers but it's just best not to if you don't have to so light layers lots of light layers and build them up from there okay so we'd already applied the mid-range yellow the mid-tone to this yellowed area now we're applying a darker one so and I'm moving in the direction of the feathers. And that that I've just done there, I've just gone over there with my fingers, very, very gently blending it into the paper, pushing the pigment into the pile of the paper. Now this is another Carbothello. These are all Carbothello pastel pencils, creating a little bit more shading and always referring back to my reference images that are to the right side. Of the camera so just off screen so how I've edited this video there were pauses where I was actually looking at the reference image and I'd just edit those pauses out because you just be watching nothing if I didn't edit those out a bit obvious isn't it but I didn't realize how much editing was needed 
for creating these videos but I do now and I, I must admit I am enjoying it and I'm enjoying the learning curve it's brilliant okay so we're going on there's some brown now this but this is a very warm brown and it's just to create a little bit of depth again I'm just blending it in very very gently very light hand and if you can see my hand is actually resting on a mole stick that saves you having to put anything on the actual painting itself to protect it from smudges with your hand <coughs> excuse me so this is a mole stick and apparently they were first created for sign writers but I use them all the time now I actually stand up to work in my studio and I'm actually having to sit down to work to create this because the the camera that I'm filming with my Canon camera is actually just over my left shoulder and it was quite awkward but it, I know I'll get used to it so I had to sit down to create this but normally I'm standing up and if I waffle too much just put me on mute I don't mind I won't know <laughs> okay so a lighter yellow now and this is where the lighter tones are coming in so creating highlights but steadily I think the people that are just starting out they think to create a highlight you just add white and that's not what you want to do at all it can be very stark so here we are we're going on with the cream now and as you can see I'm just wiping the tip of that cream pencil clean as it goes over the darker areas it's very likely to pick up the darker pigment and all that it'll do will just transfer that dark pigment to the next area where you lay the pastel pencil down so instead of getting a highlight you end up getting a muddied highlight muddied with the colour that it's picked up so just now and again just make sure that if you are working a lighter colour over a darker colour that you just clean off the tip of the pencil on a piece of tissue paper something a very fine kitchen roll tends to be a little bit coarse toilet tissue is brilliant um, and if you're going to use lots of paper tissues make sure they're not the ones that have got a balm in them make sure they're just the dry tissues cheap ones okay or you can use a piece of cotton or your t-shirt anything like that just to wipe it clear okay so just creating some more highlights working down a little bit more it's very more of the same when I'm rubbing my fingers over it it's really really light I'm only sort of dusting the surface with my fingers okay now a little bit more shading going on down there this time using an inscribe soft pastel these are really cheap really affordable supplies if you just want to give pastels a try they're a, they're a really good make to try I get on really well with them. Um, I use them in my workshops actually because they're very, very user friendly. They're not too crumbly and they're not too soft. Okay, that's another inscribe pastel being used there. And some more highlights going on. All the time keeping my hand on the mole stick. If you haven't got a mole stick, um, you can actually lay paper or card across your pastel project to stop your hand smudging the work underneath. If you're using card or paper I recommend that you use black. And the reason being is white paper and white card can give you quite a glare for your eyes and although you might not register that whilst working on it, it, it actually doesn't, it does make a difference. Or you can use glycine, which is a see-through paper that doesn't pick up anything. Um, but I just use the mole stick. Okay, now we're moving on to this area. And like I said before, this area is going to be predominantly black. But I never lay black down on its own. Not in a very large area like this anyway. Because it would look very flat. So what I've done is I've added this navy blue soft pastel. And now I'm adding the black pastel which is carbothello again over the top now what I don't want to do is I don't want to cover all of the blue that I've just laid down what I want to do is leave some of that blue showing through the individual feathers 
and by doing this it gives it a lot more depth it gets as though you're creating more depth it actually looks like you've done more work than you have it's quite surprising the effects it can have so we're going round now moving down now to where the larger feathers are more of the same just creating a sense of, of feathered area there letting some of that blue show through and overlapping the yellow slightly that was my dog shaking by the way if you just heard a very weird sound <laughs> Okay, moving on now, and we're just creating a feathered effect. Yeah, it sounds funny for feathers, but yeah, feathered effect just around the edges and down near the yellow. I'm sorry if it's going off screen slightly at the bottom. Like I said, this is my very first attempt at filming, so um, I promise to strive to get better. Okay, now here the yellow gold feathers and the black feathers start to overlap and here instead of going on with white which some people would I guess for highlights I'm actually going on with a Carbothello pastel pencil light blue we want these feathers to look cool if I'm working on a black subject I generally do the highlights with lilacs and blues a little bit of white going right in at the end but here that's not needed because these are quite shadowed area of the bird anyway these feathers are okay and on to the face <coughs> this area is the skin part of the parrot and I've just added all over that area a layer of soft pastel in a flesh tone and now I'm going over with a white Carbothello pastel pencil and randomly put in texture in and the best way I've found to do this is to think about something else if you want something to look random think about something else if you concentrate too hard on what you're actually doing it can look very very uni you'll get that uniformity you know it'd be it'll look too false so think about your shopping list or oh, I don't know think about I don't know anything really. Your favourite painting that you've seen, favourite painting that you've done, anything. Just think about something other than what you're actually doing and enable this just to be a random patterned area. Obviously you keep referring back to your reference image to make sure these wrinkles are going in the right direction. But apart from that, let it be quite random. And that was more of the same just to cover up and obviously you're, you're going to be leaving the base colour showing through so these the ridges are done now around this area of the face there are actually tiny feathers growing out of these skin folds which is absolutely amazing when you look at these parrots close up they're beautiful so what I was using then was a daily Rowney pastel pencil, the sepia, it's a little bit harder than the Carbothellos and then we're going in with the eye, so we're using a little bit of the green that we used in the background, a little bit of Carbothello yellow, a tad of white, never do a full circle for a pupil, I only do sort of a crescent moon shape, it leaves area clear then for the highlight, a little bit of white, that was actually a Karen Dash white pastel pencil which we'll be using again in a minute it's a little bit softer than the Carbothello so there's three types of pastel pencils I'm using throughout this video the sepia was the one that I used right at the beginning to do the sketch and that's by Dela Rowney and that's the hardest out of the three types I'm using today the second sort that I've used predominantly throughout are the Carbothello 
and they're sort of a, a mid-range, soft and blendable. And then this white one that I'm using there, that's a Karen Dash, and they're very, very soft. And I'm using that there just to create a few highlights. So it seems weird, doesn't it, white going on top of white, but when it's a softer white, it shows up even more, a softer pastel. Okay, back in with that sepia, the Dale O'Rani sepia, to do a little bit of shadowing. I was going to say, if you've not got the colours that I'm using, any colours will do, just, just create. You know, whatever you've got, you can utilise. I've run workshops where I've had 20 people or more, and, and say 17 or 18 of them have used the supplies list that I've given them in advance, and they've got the same supplies as me. And then, you know, there'll be a few people who've not been able to afford to get the supplies and they've bought their own. And the result is just the same. You know, you work with what you've got. As long as you've got a blue, as long as you've got a yellow, as long as you've got a green, etc., you can work with those. It's just how you use the tools, not necessarily what you've got, but how you use it. Okay, so we've just done a bit of shading around that green area on top of the parrot's head. And we're using yellow, even though it's not in the reference image, I'm using a yellow to just warm that up and to make it look like there's highlights on top of that head. Okay, I was obviously looking at the reference image for a while there. Coming back in with a black. This is a Karen Dash. This is a Karen Dash black. Look at that lovely sharp point you can get with a knife and sandpaper. <laughs> okay, a little bit of shading around that area. And a little bit of shading on top. Working down the front. Keep constantly looking at the reference image. What I find is I try to encourage people to sort of spend 70, 75% of the time studying the reference image and then that other 25% of the time working on their project. Whatever it is, whether you're pl painting plain air in the countryside or whether you're working from reference images, the same applies. You know, if you're going to work from a photograph, get to know your photograph, get to know your, your subject. Okay, so we're on to the beak and we're adding this navy blue inscribed soft pastel. From a distance this beak looks just black but it's not, it um, has ridges. So in some areas it's quite flaky because it's made of keratin, the same as our hair and nails. So it, it shows some of the properties that our nails would show ridges, unevenness in some areas, even chipped in some areas. So I'm just shadowing with the black, that's the Karen Dash black, just creating a little shadow underneath the bill. And then very, very light hand again, just creating a very, very light layer of the black there. And that is a really light hand. I'm not pressing on at all. I'm letting the velour do the work. I'm sorry about my hair coming into the uh, screen from the right hand side. Okay. This area here is where the top bill overlaps the bottom, hooks over and it's in shadow. So I'm going in with a slightly stronger hand there just to create a thicker layer there. Uh, this area, working with the black again, working a shadowed area in, to, just to give it some shape. And more of the same. This area, coming down to the point, you've got to be really careful that you don't overlap onto the green because what you'll end up here if you do, if you keep accidentally going onto the green, you'll widen the bill and then it'll look false. And that'd be such a shame if you made that mistake now when getting this far. <coughs> Excuse me.
and back on with the blue. Very light hand. This is actually going on. It's such a dark colour, lots of pigment, but I'm actually just very gently applying this. So I'm not having to press on at all. Okay, I don't know if you noticed, I applied a little bit of the blue to the bottom bill, where the bottom bill meets the top because that's going to be part of a highlight. <clears throat> so back on with the black, very light hand. Laying the pastel pencil on its side so you don't have too much pressure and working in the direction of the beak. More of the same. And my hand is still resting on the mole stick to the side so that I'm not smudging any of the work underneath. <coughs> now back on with the Carbothello Pastel Pencil Light Blue and now I'm creating the highlights. Again holding my hand as far back as possible on the pencil so that I'm not applying any pressure and laying the pastel pencil on its side and just random marks appearing on the velour by doing this method and it's just just a very light hand that's all that's needed you just dust in the surface of the paper so the pigment applies itself really to create the highlights on the beak and the variation in patterns as well you don't want anything looking too distinct and it's very natural so little tiny squiggles and a light hand because if you pressed any harder than that you'd end up with a hard line and that's the last thing you want. You could blend it out again with your finger but um, if you use a light hand it's, it's a very easy process to create this look. More of the same. And a very small line running down the front there. A broken line though, not a solid line. And that's the beak done. <coughs> Excuse me. Now moving on to the feathers at the bottom of the picture. Working in the direction that the feathers are laying. And I'm just getting a feel now. I'm constantly looking back at the reference material but in the mid layer in, the mid tone in, which is that light blue. So it's not the lightest area on the feathers, but it's by no means the darkest either. And then adding this dark blue pastel pen, pas, sorry, soft pastel with a shadowed area. And a little bit of black just to create that bit more depth. More of the same. If you'd like to create um, a pastel painting of a, a parrot or any other bird really, there's lots of places you can go to if you can't get out to take your own photographs. There's lots of online sites. Pixabay is a good site. This is where I had this reference image from. <coughs> um, there's a, a site called Flickr.com. You can go on there and look at under the photos that have Creative Commons licenses. Wildlife reference images is another one if you want to pay for your images. Or you could ask friends and family if they go to the zoo or safari parks or things like that if they can take photos for you or well, best of all if you can take your own reference photos then it just adds to the thrill of creating a piece of artwork of your own I'm so sorry if I keep coughing I've got a, a tickly throat it's all this talking okay so we've got about five minutes left now 
and it's just uh, it's just the same process that we were using on the top section of the bird. We're just using the different shades of blue and a black, just to create highlights, lowlights, shadowed areas, and shape. And it's all about shape and form. Making something that's 2D look 3D, that's sort of it. It's a trick on the eye. <coughs> and again, I'm actually going in the direction that the feather would lay. So from the mid vein outwards, I'm working with the pastel pencils. And back up to the area that we were working on before we did the face. Just getting some base coat in now. And people would wonder why don't I just, just sweep the soft pastel from one side of the picture to the other and back again, one side of the picture and back again. It would be quicker. But then you, you run the risk of laying the velour in the wrong direction and some people can't see it but on a finished piece that that I've done I can, I can see it where I've, I've done that in the past and I don't do that anymore okay so moving on some individual feathers here and what I found was is this was fine just to go on with a very light hand with a soft pastel pencil this is the Carbothello and just apply a base coat with that in this area. Now what I'm doing is I'm working from the underneath of the previous feather forward to the edge of the next feather and what you'll find is I'm going to be leaving a slight edge you can see it just above where I'm actually working now so there's a slight edge around each feather and you'll see why in a minute as we work through this video So like chain mail, they just sit nicely on top of each other. <coughs> but I'm leaving those areas because I'm going to be tinting those areas. And here we go. And what I'm doing is I'm using a, a darker Carbothello pastel pencil. It's got slightly lilac-y hue to it. And I'm just running that now over the surface so my hand's back along the barrel of the pencil. The pen pencil's laying on its side and I'm just rubbing very, very gently, just dusting the surface and the velour that hasn't got any pastel on it is picking that up and it's also tinting those other areas that I've just done as well. Moving on a little bit more, putting a little bit shadowing in around these feathers and I hope this video has run at a, an appropriate speed for you and now what I'm doing I'm just using a very very light blue pastel pencil this is a Caran d'Ache so it's very soft and I'm just feathering some of the edges of some of the feathers so again I'm not outlining the feathers because that looked very cartoonish and false but I'm just picking up where I'd like a few highlights to be around the edges of the feathers and I work this down and over the shoulder of the, the wing it's just where the light would be hitting the edges of those feathers and there it is going over it just a little bit more just keep standing back from your work now generally people will view a piece from two and a half times its diagonal so when you, you're looking at a piece of your artwork that's how far you need to stand back generally to pick out anything else that needs doing two and a half times the diagonal and there you have it I hope you've enjoyed this video and please subscribe and I look forward to doing more with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.